everybody and welcome back to Albert vs. The Asylum. Today, we're talking about Moby Dick 2010. The Asylum's adaptation of Moby Dick that tells you right in the title what year it came out. So many other movies don't do this, right? When you watch E.T., you're like, what year did this come out? I don't know. And the title doesn't tell you. Okay? When you watch Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises and you think, yes, fine, okay, all of this stuff about Batman is great, but what year was the movie released? Title, I need to know this, okay? I can't be Googling all over the place looking for the year that the movie came out. I need it in the title. And the Asylum gives you that service with Moby Dick 2010. How does the actual movie stack up? Well, let's take a look and find out. Remember, vote Moby Dick in 2010. A vote for Moby Dick is a vote for sanity. Yep, that's what snow looks like. Just wanted to check again. Down scope. Take her down, Mr. Davis. Hi, Captain. Help. Wait, seriously, hey, two, what were they looking for? Degrees Are they on a polar bear hunting expedition? What did they expect to find? We're heading into Soviet waters. Uh, no. You're already in Soviet waters. Can you not read the title card? Behold, the face of a man listening to Bjork for the first time. Only 90s kids will remember the pain of hearing them play your favorite song on the radio and panicking because you haven't got a tape Sonar, in the deck yet. New broadband contact. What's going on, Bill? Nothing, sir. Seaman Ahab's just picked up a thermal up. No, sir, that's not what it was. You know, this guy's one job on the submarine is to listen for funky sounds through his headset. Maybe... When he tells you that he's hearing some funky sounds through his headset, you should believe him. Contact now angling down. Son, I'm not hearing anything. And it definitely doesn't have anything it's to do really with the fact sound, that I'm sir. only using half a headset. It's more of an emptiness. Cheese! Coming soon to theaters. Free Willy 4, The Revenge. Is that whale floating? Like, in the air? Moby, my man, if you gotta get that close to something to see it, it might be time to start thinking about glasses. Okay, no, I was joking before, but he's straight up flying here. That's the only way that motion makes any sense. Da. Da. Call me Michelle. Ha! <laughs> do, do you get what they did there? Do, do you get it? Because of the opening line of, of Moby Dick, it's, it's, it's call me Ishmael, but... But Ishmael doesn't make sense as a girl's name, and it, it's a girl. I, I get it too. It's funny. Let's get so, to work! Did you get fired? I didn't get fired, I'm on a sabbatical. Why is he waiting until so now to ask her about boat. this? Did he just now hear about it? Because they're in a boat in the middle of the ocean, and we didn't see him get a phone like call. That, then I do sound crazy. Am I gonna get paid? I don't know, it depends on if you can get that in fixed. Please. Wait, so she did get fired, but he's still gonna get paid. Is she is some she independently wealthy so whale researcher? Why is she using a micro cassette recorder? This is Moby Dick 2010, not Moby Dick signal. 1992. Wow, movie. Thanks for showing us her typing 567H0I. You know, a lot of times, when you see a character typing a password on a keyboard in the movies, you don't see what they're typing. 
and you're like sitting there at home wondering what could it be that they were typing on their keyboard. But Moby Dick 2010 does not leave us in that kind of suspense. It's like, no, we're going to show you. 567H0I is what she was typing. Now you know. It's not half the battle. It doesn't do you any good, but you do have the knowledge. This is the mating call of the large male humpback whale. Oh, I the didn't know Kevin James was going to be in this movie. Is to warn whales to stay away from hazardous areas. Wait, who is she example, explaining this to? Is, is this so microcassette powerful. not for her it's own personal me. use? It's even harmful to the whale's natural ability Michelle. to navigate. Michelle! The behavior is completely Look. modified to avoid Look. potentially deadly Uh, excuse me, she's trying to narrate her autobiography here. Do you mind not interrupting with your stupid whales? <laughs> Where are they all going? Well, they just heard this was the casting call for an asylum movie, and these whales have standards. There's something down there. First, nice ADR, and secondly, of course there are! You just saw them! It was a whole bunch of whales! You called them here! What is up with this movie and extreme close-ups of things that don't make any sense? First it was the whale eye, and now this. I'm Lieutenant Commander Starbuck, USS Pequod. I need you to come aboard, man. Man, they have Starbucks everywhere these days. Why? Everything will be explained once we're underway. Go. Uh, what was my line again? Uh... No, I'm not getting on that thing. <laughs> I'm afraid I must insist, man. Oh, well, since you insisted, oh. why not? All right, then can I speak to your superior? Captain Ahab is not feeling well. I tried but to warn him that shrimp had been in the refrigerator for three services. weeks, but he would not listen. And what if I refuse? Then, in accordance with the suspension clause, Article 1, Section 9 of the United States Constitution, I will order these gentlemen to compel you to cooperate. For those of you who are curious, Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution states, in part, the privilege of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless, when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but hunting a whale, I do not believe qualifies as either invasion or rebellion. And even if it did, habeas corpus is about taking people that you think may have committed a crime and locking them up. It's not some carte blanche just to Grab some people and send them on their whale hunting expedition. Right, Pip, call the institution and ask to speak to Dr. Pippin. My lawyer's name is Mihan. I'm afraid Mr. Pippin will be joining us. Say what? I too am surprised. And not just because they're being kidnapped, but because apparently this guy's not Queequeg? Like, Pippin is a character in Moby Dick. But he was already on the ship when Ishmael got there, all right? He was not Ishmael's ethnic friend that he met before he got on the ship and found out about Moby Dick. If you're gonna adapt Moby Dick, why not just adapt Moby Dick? Why do you gotta move characters around? Is Ahab going to show up just serving fries somewhere in a McDonald's because there was a character in the book named Ahab and they had to shove him in the movie somewhere? Because that's not how you do this. Take the equipment below. All right. So what about my boat? Stow it on board. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, as someone who's read all of the pages of Moby Dick, I know that the coffin is what Ishmael rides to safety after the boat sinks at the end of Moby Dick. So, here's a boat called the Coffin. It's being put on the submarine. The submarine's gonna sink at the end of the movie, and the boat's gonna pop up in the ocean and save Michelle. Just like in the book, but a little bit different. Spoilers, we're never gonna see this boat again. It was completely pointless 
to have a boat called the Coffin in this movie as an adaptation of Moby Dick. It's gone forever! Oh, and ma'am, would you mind covering up? We've been deployed for five and a half months and, well, the men. Oh, that's just brilliant. I know that I have been interrupting the movie a lot lately, but I'd just like to point out that the implications of this line is that the submarine is filled with uncontrollable rape monsters. And if they see a lady in a bikini top, there's just literally nothing they could do to stop themselves from sexually assaulting her. Which disappoints me as a human, because ew, and disappoints me as a pig person, because... Now we don't get to see the lady in the bikini top anymore. So, double bummer. Where do you want to put her, sir? That's a good question. These two did just get kidnapped by a random sub that just crept up on them, right? That's not a thing that I just imagined. Because they're taking this way too calmly. Sharing with six tons of high explosives, Chief Queequeg will escort you down to the control room for degree. Yes. This is Queequeg, someone who has apparently been on board the Pequod the whole time, and, spoilers, will make almost zero contribution to the plot. How do you even adapt, movie? Watch your head. Ow. Well, I'm glad they at least kept right. the Ishmael is a klutz and runs into everything on the boat part from the book. Welcome aboard the Whale Tail, folks. Sit right back while we enter whale territory. You mean like the ocean? And we'll be cruising at an altitude of approximately zero feet. I can already smell the blubber. There was an intense contract negotiation All with this right, guy, and he I said he was only going to let his boat be in the movie if they let him do his entire whale watching shtick. Now we're going to be heading out deep, so if it gets a little choppy, y'all might want to hold on. Oh, shit, something else. You know, I'm on board with Moby Dick being a giant fish monster in this adaptation, but how does it make any sense for him to be a cannibal? Like, thematically. Wait a minute, what am I saying? Eyes on your stations, Ben. Unless we forget, if she wasn't wearing that shirt, it would be physically impossible for them to obey that order. Full speed ahead. Two weeks ago. Norwegian fishing trawler capsized in the Chuck Cheese Sea. You know, my kid keeps Five bugging me to go to the Chuck E. Cheese Sea, but I'm just creeped out by all their animatronic squid. But then that would make it, what, 400 feet? More like five. Yeah, Mega Shark was 3,000 feet. This guy's small potatoes for an asylum film. Is, but it's not a sperm whale. Do we pick up the wrong scientist? Uh, you kidnapped a woman off some random boat in the San Francisco harbor. You're lucky you got a scientist at all. I mean, the size of the the head and then the jawline. Yeah, well, it's not that simple, you see. Because the. Uh, My the favorite thing about her performance is that you can see her trying to remember her lines as she's saying them. I do. Captain on deck. You know, I gotta say, it's a bold choice to change the character of Ahab from someone who doesn't have a leg. Here. To someone who's just wearing a poorly fitted ski boot. It says 1969. Moby Dick is older than that. Moby Dick, sir? I hated that book in college. You've heard of him, Chief? Anyone who spent time at sea has heard of Moby Dick, Captain. We're all crazy for that song he did for the end of the Bourne Identity. Well, old sailors swear that Moby Dick is both omnipresent and immoral. You do understand the meaning of the word omnipresent, don't you, my dude? Because an omnipresent whale is it's just a whale that's everywhere. It's, it's a universe that's made out of whaleness. Which seems like it might not be the case. We might be able to disprove that particular theory. Wait, you're going to take revenge on an animal. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. Oh yeah? Well, well, I heard the son say that that you're fat and that your leg is stupid. I read your dissertation on biomass estimation and echolocation, and I have been following your work in cetacean semiotics for years. 
If anyone could track an individual whale, it's you. Well, on the one hand, you did kidnap me from my boat, but expedition. on the other hand, you read and liked my Wait, dissertation? I will help you! Oh, the doctor's up to his old tricks with the psychic paper, I see. Well, on the plus side, maybe that means Moby Dick is an alien in this movie. He got his prosthetic hand from a J.C. Penney's mannequin. Penny's captain. Have a seat. Scotch? No, Dutch Irish. 1900, sir. Make it a small one. Boomer, what can you tell me about Captain Jonah Ahab? Sir? You mean the character from the great American sure novel? Well, Twice. college was a while yes, back, I mean, sir, but let me see what I can remember. What kind of incidents? Sinkings. Well, he is on a submarine. Isn't that kind of the point? Rig. And you think Ahab is responsible? That's what I need you to find out. You need him to find out if you think Ahab is responsible for sinking a whaleboat? We have every ship in US Couldn't you just tell him? Searching for the Pequod. The USS Essex is in the area with orders to engage. We cannot have a sub-commander off the reservation with a boatload full of nukes. We put him on that reservation after we invaded and took away all his other land with our superior firepower, and he had darn well better be happy about it. Meanwhile, the large black penis boat slides unnoticed beneath the ocean waves. It's just completely jammed. Uh, hey, this is just a shot in the dark, but have you tried putting it in a tape player That's not first? Gonna work. This is a micro cassette. Give it to me. Yeah. We only need the first ten minutes. Yeah, after that, it's just the Humpty Dance over and over Y'all again. I how to do this, <gasps> when I could only find a break I wanted on the track. <laughs> It was this real choice riff from the Goldberg variations, you know what I'm saying? You are a genius! <gasps> Radio con, employ antennae to scan all frequency. Belay that. We don't want to expose ourselves any longer than we have to. Nice, Just sir. out of curiosity, what exactly is well, the correct length now. of time to expose yourself you? for? Report! Well, for starters, all of our light bulbs seem to be red, Captain. Is it the Pequot? <laughs> What am I supposed to do with these extreme close-ups on Moby Dick's eye? Diagnose his cataracts? Sir, the Essex has gone to active sonar. Flank, intercept course on the Essex. Hi, Captain. All head flank. Sir, even at flank speed, it'll take over four hours to reach that destination. All oh, right, I forgot about submarine rush hour. <laughs> Sir, the submarine we're tracking seems to be roaring at us. Sir. This doesn't look like a sub. It's more like a club sandwich or a po' boy, sir. We're flooded and equalized. Commence fire in 2 1. Torpedo 1 is fired and closing on target. Uh, movie, do I need to be so close to the whale that I can see his acne scars? Report! 200 meters and closing. Alright, Mr. Stokes, I'm ready for my close up. Oh, come on! There's absolutely no reason that should have missed him! Torpedo's still running! Which is impressive, considering that it's American-made. I see you perverts looking at my tail! Target is biological. That's impossible! Well, if it can't be biological, that leaves only it's one option. We're dealing with a giant robotic whale. Of action. This All movie just Let's got go even more awesome. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. But we're getting reports that a marine biologist has disappeared in San Diego. A marine biologist? I thought all those died out in the Clone Wars. That she was abducted by a black submarine. Oh sure, make it a race thing. You know, white submarines never get this kind of scrutiny. Hey, it's 2010 Moby Dick, not 2001 Moby Dick. Get a real cell phone, Grandpa. Yeah. She's in the water almost four hours. She's suffering from exposure, dehydration, and sunburn. Also, she keeps complaining about how the whale watching cruise she was on really ripped her off. A Russian refusing alcohol after a traumatic event is the most unrealistic thing in this whole movie. It, it attacked us from under. The sea. Under the sea. Under the Ooh, sea. Like. Moby's a biter, and he's much whiter. Take it from me. 
I've cleared the tapis and I'm applying the DNR now. But just as soon as I'm done editing my podcast, I promise I'll get back to work on the whale thing. Okay. Everything's clear except for the source. Initiating playback. It's not a sound. It's it's more like the absence of sound. Like a hole in the water. There's a yes. hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. It's his voice. He thinks he can sing, and we just haven't had the heart to tell him. Captain, Captain why is the Please lighting so wonky on this bridge? I can't see a no, darn thing, no, sir. Can. My name is Queequeg, and I'm an important Captain, character sir. in this story. What are they looking for? There's no windows on the submarine. Activate the photonic mast. Okay, fine. You guys found me. Now I'll count and you can hide. Yeah, I have done that joke before. Sue me. All hands, this is your captain. Look at you. What? We can't hear you. Can you speak a little louder, please? This could have been you. And it still might be. But only if you act now and call in to our Get Killed by Moby Dick sweepstakes. Hurry up! Positions are limited. We're only doing their duty. And now they'll never be doing their duty again. And now we must do ours. We have to do twice as much duty now that these guys are gone. You guys have got to do so much duty! The thing that did this to them is the thing that we're after. It's the RB Smoke Mountain Sandwich, men. Moby Dick. Aw, uh, sir, I have a copy right here on my Kindle of that work. We're gonna chase him to hell if we have to. Now that's something I would and pay good money to him. see. And when we're done with him, he will spout black and roll in his own blood. Is that hot or what? We owe this to the men of the Essex. We owe this to ourselves. Treat yourself. And may God hunt us all if we do not hunt Moby Dick to the death. You gotta admit it. Even in a trashy movie like this, if you let Herman Melville write your script, you're gonna have a slam dunk of an epic speech on your hands. Admiral, I have Captain Enderby. Boomer, what the hell is going on out there? You called us right in the middle of our fantasy football draft. This had better be important. No, it is too late for that. I called in a favor from First Marine. I can be there in four hours. In four hours, the Pequot will be at the bottom of the ocean. Well, yeah, but it's a submarine. not get on the torpedo and ride it like Slim Pickens at the end of Dr. Strangelove. I will not get on the torpedo and ride it like Slim Pickens at the end of Dr. Strangelove. He took my leg. I don't intend to give him my ass. I mean, sure, I've thought about it. Who hasn't? But I just don't swing that way, you know? Permission granted. Activate Ramex. Torpedo, this is the captain. Sub rocks. One and two. What's a sub rock? Basically a nuclear torpedo. And now from the new biggest hit from Sub Rock's latest album, Nuclear Torpedoes. 100 meters to target. 50 meters to target. Do you want Godzilla? Because this is how you get Godzilla. Destroyed. I think you got Moby Dick, sir. Moby Dick? You fools! I told you to target Ulysses! Congratulations, Pequod! You've nuked a school of squid. Okay, on the one hand, we didn't get Moby Dick. On the other hand, who wants radioactive sushi? Where there are squid, there are whales. Newton's lesser-known fifth law. Prepare to launch torpedoes. You know, you can talk all day long about how great Herman Melville is and what an amazing work of literature Moby Dick was, but guess what? Herman Melville never had a giant whale eat a helicopter, did he? Yeah, checkmate literature. Just in case you'd forgotten what a submarine looks like from three seconds ago. <sighs> Moby Dick is close. I can feel Why it. Why were they shooting at us? 
I don't know. Maybe it's because you're acting fishy? Time to earn your keep, Doc. I need to see our orders, sir. Oh, right. Now he starts questioning the validity of this mission. Orders, sir. Up until this point, he was totally on board with the idea that the United States government ordered this guy to hunt down a big fish. I can't do this without my exo. Would you just shut up and kiss him already? See, this is what happens when you eat chili while you're riding a pogo stick. All these colored lights really hurt the sailor's eyes, but the Navy got them super cheap, so they gotta use them. Okay, first of all, Queequeg is virtually a non-character. And now you take Fadala and turn him into a literal inanimate object? 2010 wasn't that long ago. It certainly wasn't so long ago that y'all shouldn't have realized that taking all of the American Indian characters and just pushing them off to the side might have been a little problematic. Moby Dick can only be taken by something that has touched him. And this thing that's connected to them is the thing that's going to kill him. So why not just ram the whole submarine into him? Because then the submarine will have touched him, and then the submarine and everything and everyone on it will be able to kill him. And also, can he be killed by the water that he is swimming in? I feel like this new bit of information just raises all the questions. Admiral, did they find him? Oh, they found him. He shot down one of the summer Seahawks with a subrock. Which, as you might recall, is definitely against the rules of hide and seek. Why wouldn't he use one of his tomahawks? It's him. It's him. No, wait, never mind. He's rickrolling us again. He's a mile away bearing 125. Behold, the one passenger on the cruise ship. Wow, business is not good for those guys right now. They said I was crazy to book an entire cruise ship just for myself, but I'll show them. I'll show them all! Your brand of misguided opulence is exactly what's wrong with this country! Pip, I want you to take the signal and put it into output. Give me all the volume you can. Or, you know, you could do that. Meanwhile, Ahab sends his thoughts and prayers. All right, I got it. Go, go. Execute. She's not doing anything to deal with the whale situation. She just really needs to listen to Taylor Swift's new album, like, right now. You know, I never thought I'd hear myself say these words, but Moby Dick looks kind of derpy. He's turning. He's two kilometers and closing. The Fadala is ready to fire, sir. No, 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 not yet. Not yet, Mr. Q. Yeah, you don't want to fire the Fadala too soon. Fire! Fire it! Uh, guys? You forgot to put the blowing up part in the missile. We got it! You had a direct hit. And it didn't do the thing where it blows up. Lost port diving plane. All hands, brace for impact. No, see, I see how you have a rope tied to the missile that's also tied to Moby Dick, but missiles generally explode when they hit the thing. Oh, the engine's not responding. Our depth is one five zero zero and lowering. I knew we should have just made it blow up. Sir, we've lost the tether. <laughs> Now, how are we supposed to play our bi-weekly pickup game of tetherball? Take us up. Would you call this a normal day? <laughs> no. Nah. On a normal day, we have tater tots I in the cafeteria, but today, pea but soup. I've never experienced anything like that. It's the whiteness of the world that freaks me out the most. You know what I mean? White is for the good guys. I have no problem seeing white as evil. I'm not quite woke enough to know if this is clever or offensive. I feel like it would be easier to tell if the white director of the movie had cast more than just these two black people 
and if he hadn't written all of the Native American characters out of the film. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. How is he staying so far out of the water like that? Sir. Is Moby Dick inflatable? Hey, Mr. Starbuck, we're going after him. Prepare all torpedo tubes. Switch to active sonar. We're not hiding anymore, gentlemen. It's our turn to seek, so everybody close your eyes and count to 20. You give this whale too much credit. No, he's not a whale. He's a devil himself. And we're going to catch him and make him pay for what he did to eggs. Helm, all ahead full. All ahead full, I sir. Into the belly of the beast. Sir, you know I'm going to have to report you to HR again, right? Let's make the bottom. Alternatively, he's not that clever, and you're just a moron. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm not laughing about this. This is really tragic, but I just remembered a great joke that Mr. Starbuck told me earlier. <laughs> there. there they are, right there! Are you serious? Fire! Fire! The target is 100 yards from the atoll. Jeez, what an atoll. If you didn't already know these guys were in the military, the fact that they showed up, saw a new thing, Pull and up. instantly tried to kill it would be a pretty good clue. Pull up. Shall I fire a volley into the lagoon, sir? No, Chief, we're going in after him. Sir, the opening's only 12 feet deep. We're too tall. Huh? We'll face them like our ancestors did. From the safety of the shore. Prepare the Zodiac. Sir, I get that you're superstitious and everything, but is this really the best time to be consulting your horoscope? What do they think they're doing with those guns? I'm pretty confident you couldn't kill a real whale with one of those rifles. It ain't gonna work against monster devil whale Moby Dick. And apparently you can just wander into a top secret one-of-a-kind military submarine. No security whatsoever. Enter. I know you. Captain Boomer. You know, I get that Ahab is a crazy person, but... He's still being remarkably chill about this guy that just wandered into his quarters on his submarine. Arm and leg together again. Arm and leg. It's like arm and hammer, but the kind you buy at the Stop dollar store. Turner. Half the Navy is looking for you. And when they find you, they won't hesitate to destroy you. But the other half thinks you're a really chill dude, so could be worse. Have you forgotten what it was like to sit out on that sea ice and watch your arm go gangrenous while we were waiting to be rescued? Jeez, gangrenous. How long were they out there? The months. And how did they survive the Arctic years winter? Years of, of rehabilitation. Asking yourself what kind of a god could allow such a thing. My money's on set, but there's an outside chance it could have been Kali too. And coming to the conclusion that he was either malicious or indifferent. And then realizing you don't know which is worse. Malicious. Malicious is worse. An omnipotent god that hates you is very, very bad. Such a thing cannot be allowed to live. This atheism-inducing whale must be destroyed at all costs. Killing him won't bring back my arm, and it won't bring back your leg. But it will bring back Pog, so let's like get that. to killing. And whether you succeed or fail, how many people need to die? All of them. Technically accurate. This whole act has been decreed. I am the Fate's Lieutenant. Yeah, but Fate's Lieutenant Commander told you to knock it off like three times already. Save your ammunition, Captain. You're gonna need it later. Yeah. He's gonna need his 9mm handgun to shoot at a whale the size of a cruise ship. He really needs to save his ammo. Mr. Starbuck, 
Give us two hours, no more. If it takes longer than that, the pizza is free. If I fail or if Moby Dick tries to escape, I want you to hit him with everything we've got. I've got I'll a Yoda him Pez dispenser in my desk. Me. Make sure you hit him with that first. If I don't make it back, make sure this gets to the institution. Oh, you better come back. I still need to get paid. Man, that Herman Melville sure knew how to write him, didn't he? Captain, I made this from the damaged bow plane, sir, just as you ordered. Son, this is literally the worst coffee cup I've ever seen in my life. Now, you see it's properly tempered. And so you see, old Ahab never did learn what the word tempered meant. And his crew was too scared to tell him he'd been using it wrong this whole time. Behold the face of a man who just remembered he's in an asylum movie. Come on, guys, go faster, they're winning! All right, Captain, here's the espresso machine you asked us to bring along for some reason. Okay, when we get to the beach, we're setting up these Captain, tether balls. These mines are a little unpredictable. Did you see that Sun wussy throw? I'm gonna dominate that Negative main and beach volleyball later. What is she supposed to be looking at? Did the boats magically start flying off screen? He must have gone to bottom. This lagoon is deep. Ah, an hour at the most. He has to breathe. He's a damn mammal. I mean, sure, he might be an omnipresent devil will, but he has to breathe and stuff. What do you want me to do? They're birds. At first I thought they were aardvarks, what? but they're definitely birds. The birds! He's under you! He's right below! Stupid birds always giving away the omnipresent god will's position. Uh, yeah. That's what the scientific advisor that you illegally kidnapped just said. I ask, and not for the first time, why did you kidnap this person and bring her along if you were not going to listen to the things that she had to say? Man, it's a good thing they brought along their bullet guns to shoot at the god whale. Bullets. No, you dummy, this is how you do the backstroke. Did anyone make it to shore? I don't see how anyone could survive that. Well, normally they couldn't, but the Navy has this new secret invention called swimming. Come on, we're over here. We already got the beach volleyball net set up. Hey, Moby Stubb, Dick you think maybe now is not the best time to pull again. out your cigar? Enchijago was missing. All right, well, Don't print out some flyers and put them on the telephone poles around oh, the neighborhood, see if anybody sees him. Well, it seems like we're destined to see this thing through together, Doctor. You do realize there's a difference between destiny and place? kidnapping at gunpoint, right? Type e with a leopard colony. Hey, at least it's not tigers. Hand me that cross up there that says maples on it. It was a really tiny dude that got crucified for some reason. I'll tell you the story later. All right, men, now the next part of our plan involves getting a vampire to bite Moby Dick. <laughs> you believe in omens, men? Always remember, kids, Jesus is the reason thing, for we'll Moby go Dick. Down and rise up again twice. And this sucks. You gotta be out there? Yeah, I guess you're right. As far as I'm concerned, if we're gonna hunt for whales, it's better to do it from the safety of the land. It's really incredible how these actors make Herman Melville's classic dialogue just come alive. Come back! Well, he was perfectly safe when he was standing on dry land, but now the... No! No, how does that... What is even happening? I don't... This is not... None of this is anything that even resembles reality. Here's the thing. I could accept Moby Dick hurling himself up into shallow water and even up onto the beach to eat this dude. But that's not what they did. No, no. This guy wandered into six inches of water and found himself suddenly standing on top of a hidden giant Behemoth whale. Did Moby Dick 
bury himself on the beach when no one was looking? How? I personally thought the really loud whale roaring was a little more conclusive, but sure. Also guns. I'm just gonna assume the whale just started flying like Superman here. Okay, well, I wasn't too far wrong, I guess. It tasks me. That whale tasks me! This is your fault! You're hunting him! He's not hunting us! We're not even in season! Here he is, Moby Dick, the flying whale! Look at me! Okay, now that should have done something! My dude, you are literally never going to get a better shot than that. So Don Quixote charged at the flying invincible whale with his rubber boat and a pop gun. Wow, it's further out here than I thought. I guess I should have waited a while to start screaming. Oh, that's not the right knot for that, but dude, you really want to use a bowline. I spit my last breath at you. Try saying this next time someone tells you to say it and not spray it. Wait a minute, he didn't even hit him in the eye? Thing's like 30 feet tall, how did he miss? <laughs> you know, the weird thing is Ahab does this exact laugh every time they have open mic night on the sub. Oh wait guys, there's still hope. These guys have their pistols out. We've lost communication with our last Zodiac. Target is now hit it this way. All right, everybody, try to act cool. Torpedo con. Prepare one through four. But don't shoot him yet, because those guys on the beach with handguns might still take him out. Two zero zero yards. Ow, 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 my eye, my eye. I have a thing right next to my eye. Ow. One five zero yards. My dude, if you're waiting to see the whites of his eyes, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be severely disappointed. 100 yards, sir. He's totally cool with this turn of events, just so long as he's still getting paid. Who built the armaments on this submarine? The Acme Corporation? We have to get out of here. You won't make it. Why not? The torpedoes can't be that powerful. The submarine was firing them at a target 150 yards away. How long does it take you to run 150 yards? You can't outrun a torpedo. You can actually, can because torpedoes don't go on land. Wow, it looks like the torpedoes haven't hit yet. Maybe we could have outrun them. The movie score wants you to think these guys are cool for sitting and waiting for their inevitable death instead of running away. They are not cool! They are just dumb! Abandon ship! See? It turns out you can outrun a torpedo and have time to turn around and watch the destruction. Oh, apparently the island was made of dynamite. Someone maybe should have mentioned that sooner in the movie. Whee! And that was 2010 Moby Dick. I like this one. I truly did. Moby Dick is a ridiculous ridiculous novel to adapt into a movie. All of the best parts of Moby Dick are just Herman Melville rambling on about like random whale facts and the origins of the crow's nest, okay? The actual like, we're gonna go hunt a whale and throw a spear at it is, is pretty lame by comparison. It doesn't really make the story, but it's the part of the story that everybody knows about. So if you're gonna make a movie, 
about Moby Dick? Why not make it awesome? Why not have Moby Dick be a giant monster fish, not quite as big as Mega Shark, but still pretty cool looking, and have Ahab in the modern day with a submarine and missiles and things to shoot at him? Like, just go whole hog! Okay, you're not gonna do justice to the original literary glory of Moby Dick. So just have fun with it! And this movie does! And it's not boring! And it, it's it's got that bonkers, wonderful, like, asylum over-the-top feel, and, and the wonderful, cheesy special effects that still, in this case at least, like, work pretty well, all right? It's got all of that stuff in, in a good package. Like, Moby Dick surprised me with how much fun it is. I really thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It's, it's not a great adaptation, but... If you're gonna slap a famous story name and some famous story details onto a story and, and then bring it into the modern era, there's a lot worse things that you could do that to. And Moby Dick, in this instance, I think just works for it. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, if you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and do not forget that videos like this are made possible by awesome people who support us on Patreon. If you go over to patreon.com slash human echoes, you can become a patron over there. You can support the stuff we make and you can get these videos released early and a lot of our other stuff too. The bonus podcast, uh, postcards from us and lots of cool things like that. And we would really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it because it makes what I'm doing here possible. If you like this, support it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time and take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.